welcome to In My Mug episode 318 on the 15th of December 2014. I am your host, Stephen Layton. Welcome to In My Mug and welcome to my news. Don't know where that voice came from. <laughs> so, um, this is the final um, presentation box uh, for Alejandro's special special packs this is a once in a coffee lovers lifetime opportunity to win the five different processes we did on this one small one acre tablon if you don't want to know what i'm talking about go back to episode 316 and ali talks about these i've also done a podcast on it an audio boo uh, i'm going to put that on the screen now a link to that but uh, all of the different ones you get the presentation you also get a little booklet and in that booklet it tells you uh, a little bit about my relationship with ali um, it tells you a little bit about Dale, who used this in barista competition last year's relationship, and then a little bit from Ali. And then each of the descriptors for the coffees. This is pretty unique. I mean, look at the box itself. The box is amazing. I'm so excited. A little magnetic -y. Um At the moment, I'm recording this on Friday for it to go at the weekend. We're into single figures of these left. So I'm not hard selling because I want to sell them. They're so limited. We're going to sell out this weekend. I'm really just selling, telling you, you do not want to miss out. This is a great, great opportunity. Um, yes, golden tickets, who got one? Um, you have two weeks in which to use your golden ticket, um, or as soon as it sells out, which we do have a limit on how many of this uh, special secret subscription um, there are. Uh, I'm sure you will want one. They are very special. It's gonna be pretty cool. If you look at the last two years of these one-off subscriptions we do every year, they're normally pretty amazing. They normally lose me a heap of money too, um, but they're lots and lots of fun, and I like to have lots and lots of fun. Um, so if you haven't had a golden ticket, drop me an email, drop me a text. I might be able to sort you out with a digital one. Just ask me. We'll sort you out. Um, if you're watching my mug, then you deserve a golden ticket because you are one of the uh, the very special few customers um, that we have that you know kind of watch all this stuff. So yeah, do drop me an email or drop me a tweet or anything. We'll sort it out. And it's all about Christmas at the minute. But have you seen our 12 days of Christmas? Go to www.hasblog.co.uk and you'll be able to see where we're up to. Did day six on Friday. But before that, day five was pretty immense. A super interesting honey pack that will not definitely won't be in my mug. There's a very, very rare geisha in there as well. Uh, and you can buy them all together, so if you bought them separately, it's about 40 quid for these five coffees. Um, but if you buy them together, you get 20% off, um, which I think is a really good value. And great to try a white honey, a red honey, a black honey, a washed, and a black honey geisha, all from the same farm. And they're all bourbons as well, which is pretty, pretty awesome. Um, and that was the news. And while I'm talking about bourbon, why don't we do a focus on this week on the bourbon varietal? So the Bourbon Coffee Varietal uh, is believed to have originated on the island of Bourbon, uh, which is now known as the Island of uh, Reunion, or maybe in Ethiopia. It's a little bit kind of sketchy. But this varietal has many, many sub-varietals. It is at massive risk to pest and disease, uh, decidedly average in its terms of yield, but the cut profile is phenomenal. And it's probably my go-to varietal. Um, there is a little bit of evidence that the yellow bourbon gives a higher yield compared to red and orange. Uh, so there's a, a little bit of fat, fat tet of it. But um, red is the most prevalent of the colours. Um, you don't find so much of the yellow and orange. Um, it is mainly the red. Um, has very, very close links with things like SL28, Tipica, Katura, um, also of uh, Munda Novu, um, of Pacas. Uh, like it's DNA is all over lots and lots of other varietals. And that's mainly because of its age and also because a lot of it has mutated as it's gone on but also a lot of the times it's been cut into different plants to try uh, and keep the cup quality while uh, improving the yield. Um, I, 
I don't think that it's a coincidence that some of my favourite all-time coffees come from the Bourbon varietal. I think there's definitely something in that it produces a much sweeter cup, a more rounded cup, and a more uh, balanced cup than some of the other varietals. Particularly lends itself well, anecdotally, to espresso. Uh, I tend to find that a Bourbon... Uh, definitely a washed or a pulp natural ball, but actually even a natural, now screw it, all of them, um, tend to produce uh, great espresso braced drinks. Um, and I think a lot of that is down to uh, the characteristics that it has, if it's sweet, balanced, rounded, smooth, um, you know, chocolate is always a very big descriptor in them, in there. And that was Focus On. I do like my Bourbons, and I do like that this week's coffee is also a Bourbon. Um, and keeping in that Christmas vein, the gifts just keep coming. Last week, La Pira, great feedback from it. Thank you very, very much for all the lovely emails. Uh, I'm sure we'll get just as many about this week's. Last week's was £12 a bag. This week's, 15 quid a bag. I don't know why I do these things. Um, I, I mean, I know a lot of the time on the subscriptions we end up losing lots of money, but I don't care. Because this is from one of my all-time favourite coffee farms. And it's coming back after a couple of years away from us. Um, and I'm very, very happy to see it back. I, I, I welcome it back with a big, huge smile. Um, it really is a super special coffee. In fact, I often get asked a lot of the time what is my favourite coffee of all time. And I don't say because for me, it's like saying, who's your favorite child? You know, I only have one child, so I guess that's not a great analogy, but do you know what I mean? It's like saying, you know, who's your favorite auntie? Well, you know, they're, they're all different and you like them all. Um, but I tend to give a list of three, and this is definitely one that is always, always in there. Um, it goes back to 2008, when I was in El Salvador on a buying trip, and I was visiting some of the farms that we, we buy from. And I arrived just before the awards evening of the Cup of Excellence. Um, and before the ceremony started, this guy came up to me. He's like, Steve, great to meet you. I'm Ernesto. I'm from uh, Alaska. You bought my coffee in Cup of Excellence last year. We had a great little natter. Um, and, and, and yeah, it was, it was really good fun. Um, and then they did the award ceremony. And I kind of, I don't, you know, I, I used the opportunity to go to the bar and talk to some people instead of kind of hanging around to um, watch who got what. Um, and uh, afterwards, I went back in the room and Ernesto came up to me with his, he got a big trophy. And I'm like, Alaska again? And he went, no, 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 this time it's La Illusion, uh, his sister farm. Um, and uh, he decided that this year, because Alaska had done well, he was going to enter La Illusion, which is one of his smaller farms, um, and, and end up winning the whole competition. Um, it was really cool to kind of, have that relationship before then once he won everybody wanted to talk to him but actually we were still like he was more interested in coming talk to me because we bought the coffee last year when he didn't come first I think he came eight or something like that um, so uh, Ernesto's become a massive friend we communicate a lot on email he's very very active in that stuff he takes lots and lots of photos for me uh, lots of information about the farm so for instance uh, the coffee trees are 19 years of age he has 95 percent bourbon of which 70 percent is red 25 percent is orange five percent is uh, a remaining of other varietals uh, on the farm and I, when i went i definitely spotted some typica trees and they talk about sl28 a lot in 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 um uh in el salvador there were definitely some SL looking trees there. Um, the farm is uh, perched upon the Santrana volcano um, and is very, very close to a big, huge uh, national reserve um, where there are lots of like uh, native birds, trees, and you'll see on the map bit, but basically, as you go up the mountain, you get to Ernesto's farm, you get to the road, then you get to this national reserve, which is, you know, you're not allowed to plant anything on. So, um, it really is the the top of the mountain it's <coughs> sorry excuse me it's as high as Santrana can go and if you know Santrana <coughs> oh here we go coughing time if you know Santrana it's become this real hot spot for amazing amazing coffee and La Illusion is the very highest very best piece of land um, you can really get on that mountain it's no surprise to me that this coffee is amazing also this exact coffee 
uh, was used by the 2011 World Barista Champion, Alejandro Mendez. Uh, no relation to uh, um, um, uh, Ernesto Mendez. They're not related. It's a common name in, in, in El Salvador. Uh, and I know this because I roasted it for him. Uh, and he used this in the cappuccino course. Um, and I remember tasting that coffee uh, in backstage in Bogota and just going, this is one of the most delicious cappuccinos I've ever tasted in my life. Um, and he went on and his cappuccino scored incredibly hard. I cannot wait for the milk drink this week. I cannot wait for it to hit this table. Um, it really is a super, super special coffee, uh, super rare. We pay far too much money for it. Uh, Ernesto knows how to get the money out of my pocket, uh, but um, deservedly so. He runs a great farm. So the farm is called La Luz on its own by uh, Ernesto Mendez uh, or Mendenez. Um, he it is uh, on the Santrana volcano, the nearest city is Santrana. It's in the Apaneca uh, Imalapatec. Uh, mountain range, never get that right. Um, the farm is tiny, it's only 35 hectares, um, of which all is coffee growing. There's no house or anything up there, but uh, 3.5 hectares, sorry, not 35 hectares, where did I get 35 from? 3.5 hectares, which pretty much we bought over half the production this year from the farm. And, and if it was up to me, and, and up until two years ago, we used to buy all of it. Um, it is a Bourbon varietal and it is naturally processed. Um, right, we should go and do what I know is going to be one of the best map bits we've done in a while. This is going to be exciting. I've been looking forward to this map bit for ages and ages. I can't wait to do it. So let's go up, up and away and uh, look down upon this fine island that's majority of us live actually there's more americans watching now because of our american subscriptions but that's where we live by the way americans because i know you don't know the rest of the world so there's central america you see this is just learning and learning for all of our american friends um this is a place that's just below you uh, you can drive there um and we're going to go down to sorry americans i do love you really uh, we're going to go down to el salvador and our fact this week is there are over six million people that live in el salvador and it's considered one of the most popular populated places uh, or most densely populated places in Central America so there we go there's our fact for this week um, but let's get down to this farm because uh, this is somewhere I've known really well since like 2008 uh, but haven't been for a little while there we've got our spine of farms that we buy from along the Santrana volcano but this really is the Santrana volcano like it is uh, well, you don't get any higher. And uh, I'm going to show you this. So we're going to look down from San Rafael, which is by no means uh, low down. Uh, but you can see there, the lowest point Pacific, the highest point is 2,730 metres. But Santrana is the place. It is the place for coffee. Everybody talks about it, this golden uh, kind of area. And this is as high as you get up that volcano. Um, so let's just whiz round. And I want to kind of show you San Rafael from, um, from La Lujon. And it's really good that you can kind of just see where it is. And then just to the right there, we've got Alaska, um, which is uh, another one of Ernesto's farms um, that I've also bought coffee from in the past. I was telling you in the in my mug, we bought it from the Cup of Excellence in 2008. So let's just go across here to Alaska, just so I can show you very smoothly look. So there's Alaska. And um, let's just kind of zoom up a little bit here. I want to take you to the volcano, so I'm going to try and whiz this round, so bear with me. Oh, you see that little click there? That's on Google Maps, that think FCA La Illusion. It's that famous a farm, it has its own Google little link on it, which I thought was quite cool. Let's get to this volcano. So this here is the national park I was telling you about, um, that uh, it, you can't plant anything on. And the reason it's the national park from the volcano, because there it is. So you can see it's really close to the top of that crater of one of the most famous growing regions in one of the most famous um, coffee farms. So that's for me, is one of my favourite, favourite map bits. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it too. Super, super, super cool map bit. I, I like one of my faves. Uh, I love the fact that we can see all the other farms from there as well. And it gives you a really good idea of context of where it is. So let's go and hear what wonderful fact Roland has to say today. Santrana City is the home of CD Faz, which is the largest football team in El Salvador. Mm, I don't like football.
It's true. He doesn't like football. He's fact very, very anti-football. Right, I'm going to whack you on pause. I've got tasting delicious drinks being made for me as we speak, and I'll be back with you in just a moment. So, I am back. I'm going to dive straight into the espresso. So, you can smell on this. It just smells of strawberries. It's like huge strawberries. And it's there. Big, juicy, kind of a little bit squidgy strawberry, but also beautiful licorice in the aftertaste. Like, that is huge. And for a natural, super, super clean. Really clean. But this is where I want to drink this. This is where I've been wanting to drink this. Just. Powers through. Punch it. Like fighting for its life through the cup. And you just get this delicious strawberry milkshake. It is just amazing. If you like strawberry milkshakes, you will love this cappuccino. Best, like we are in December, best cappuccino of the year, without doubt. Best cappuccino, hands down. If I was a barista competing in barista competition, that is what I, what I would give them. There you go. Little tip for aspiring baristas. Coffee, milk, delicious, smooth, amazing. Right, so it's having its second outing. We're still in Christmas, so we're going to keep drinking out the Christmas mug. And that dilution opens it up a little bit. And what happens, it becomes sweeter. Super sweet, actually. Um, becomes cake-like. It's, and, and listen, I don't know, but for me, it reminds me of red velvet cake. That beautiful, mushy, kind of soft, gentle, fluffy texture um, and taste and the strawberry and that whole milkshake thing still there. The licorice is much more subdued in the brood than it is in these two, um, but it is an amazing. And I think you can see why this coffee is so expensive. This for me, shows where the value is in it. I think it is an amazing, amazing coffee. Listen, thank you for joining me. As always, hopefully one that will get on Facebook this week because they've all been too long for Facebook recently, so i uh, tried to keep it under 20 minutes. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, do keep watching the days, uh, the 12 days of Christmas. It's happening on hasblog.co.uk. And do remember, life is definitely too short for bad coffee.